When Stuxnet was originally found in summer of 2010, we didn't really understand in the beginning what we had found. Stuxnet is the only one of its kind. It's the only malware that actually infects factory automation gear or these PLC boxes, which are basically the building blocks that control critical infrastructure and normal infrastructure around us. You go to any factory, any chemical plant, any food processing plant, you'll find these PLC gear devices and that's exactly what Stuxnet infects. And it is the only one of its kind and Stuxnet as a whole is far more complicated than anything we've seen. Stuxnet was a multi-million dollar project which we estimate took more than 10 man years to complete. So who built it? I believe Stuxnet was done by US government. In fact, I believe when George W. Bush signed a cyber attack program against the Iran nuclear program in 2008, that the end result of that signature was Stuxnet. It was, so was it done as a, the ultimate project of that? Or was it done as the, or was the alternative to a physical attack? Well, if you think about... Well, if your target is to stop a foreign nation from reaching nuclear capability, you have a couple of different options. I mean, you can go to war, mm -hmm. but nobody likes to go to war, especially USA, which already has plenty of wars at the moment. Alternatively, you can do a surgical strike. You can just send in a bomber and bomb what you think uh, where the facilities are. And, and of course, we've seen attacks like that before, but they have problems. Like, you know, you can't deny that you did it. Everybody will know that you did it because they, they, they can tell that who, who, who bombed you. Um, and you have to know what to bomb. Stuxnet will find its target. Stuxnet is just a worm, so it spreads everywhere, but it only activates when it finds the right target. It's very precise on making sure, identifying the right target before it actually starts doing anything. And that means that it will find its way to the real target, and it will even find unknown targets. So let's imagine that we know that Natan's nuclear enrichment facility in Iran was one of the targets. There could have been other targets, like clones of Natan's, completely unknown, maybe underground somewhere. But we could assume that the same nuclear researchers will be working in all of those facilities, and they would be carrying the worm with them. And you can't get that kind of deniability and that kind of reach with traditional weapons, but you do with these modern cyber weapons. So what evidence do you have that it was the Americans? I can't prove it. But if you look at who has the know-how, who has the technology, who has the motive, it's pretty obvious. Then you combine it with the fact that we know that George Bush started an operation in this, in this realm. So it's pretty clear to me. There's lots of links. Um, that people try to find to Israel. And I find it perfectly plausible that it was tested together with Israel. Mm -hmm. But uh, the fact is, we actually don't know. I believe it was done by US government. I can't prove it. Okay. Uh, is there anyone out there trying to prove it? Maybe we'll find out with the next leak to WikiLeaks. Talk about phone malware. I think that's been a topic of yours. Uh, is this a real problem? Or does the, uh, the restrictions put on, on software and the Google and the Android marketplace and the app store for iTunes uh, limit the damage that malware can do on phones. We found the very first smartphone viruses in 2006. Mm -hmm. Since then we've only found a few hundred of those, which actually is nothing. We find more new PC malware or Windows malware every single day than what we've found over the last five years on smartphones. And the main reason why we haven't seen more activity on smartphones is that current smartphones actually are more secure by their security design than our computers. Regardless of what mobile phone platform you look at, the built-in security features are far superior to what you have in, let's say, Windows or OS X on your Mac or, or so. Has there been anything to indicate that these defenses might come down, or is there a spy versus spy kind of war going on? One thing that clearly affects the amount of activity on mobile side is the fact that if we look at operating systems as a whole and just try to figure out what's the most common operating system on the planet. It's actually Windows XP. Right. Windows XP has over 50% market share of all the computers on this planet and Windows XP is 11 years old. I mean it's actually a very easy target. So now if you think about this from the point of view of the attacker, which platform are you going to target with your attacks? Windows 7, Android, iPhone or Windows XP, which is the easiest target 
and the biggest target. I mean, why would you go after anything else as long as you have this huge low-hanging fruit? But this fruit is going away. So in two or three years, the attackers will be moving to other platforms. And we expect to see much more activity, especially on Android, which is the most open of the common smartphone platforms. And right now seems to have the biggest amount of attacks against it as well. Okay. You had a talk on the Configure Worm. Yes. Uh, that you were going to give at a security conference uh, a while back, I'm not sure. When. That was in Black Hat two years ago. Uh, but the law enforcement told you not to? Um, what was the story with that? And uh, is the maybe the statute of limitations up? Can you, can you talk about it now openly? Configure is one of the biggest mysteries we've seen in the history of malware as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it was a massive botnet. We're talking about more than 10 million infected computers around the world. Uh, it used several new tricks we had never seen before, but the biggest mystery was that once this massive botnet was built, the attackers never used it. They only did some very limited um, trials showing that they could actually use it for something, but they actually never did do anything with it. And there was a big discussion about what was the original motive and who were originally behind it. And I did research on this two years ago, and I was about to do a talk on this in, in the Black Hat conference in Vegas. But I was asked um, not to go into too much details right. regarding the research. And those restrictions are still in place, and we're still not talking more about that. But there are still different theories about where Configure came from, and there's still ongoing research, and Configure is still out there. There are still more than one million infected computers by Configure right now. So you can't tell us the secrets now? No.